Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the 16 A no H notes on modeling using sine and cosine functions. So at the end of this, you should be able to say I can solve real world type problems using sine and cosine functions, and I can create a function from data. All right, so here is our example. It's from page 537, and it basically just gives us the mean monthly maximum temperature in degrees Celsius for Adelaide. Um, and it's shown here in the given table. Okay, and also uh, here's the graph over a two year period. So you can hopefully look at this and say, ah, it starts up here at the top and goes down, comes back up, and then starts repeating. That is a cosine graph, right? So um, what we want to do, and it even asks us here, model this data to t equals a cosine bt plus c. Okay, so. Here, T's, this T stands for temperature and this T stands for time, just to kind of help clarify a little bit here. So um, what we really want to do is we want to use these things together here to kind of try to figure out our three important things that we need to know, right? One is amplitude, and that's going to be our A. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we also need to figure out what the period is, and that is not equal to the B, but it a it affects the B. And then we also need to figure out what our principal axis is, which is our C, right? That's right where the middle is. That's our principal axis. That's our vertical shift, okay? So um, I think the vertical shift is probably the easiest thing to figure out. So let's do that first. We want to find the highest we want to find the maximum and we want to find the minimum. So it looks like July and January. So January 28, is there anything bigger than 28? Nope. There is our max. And then it looks like again July is supposed to be our minimum and that's it, 15.1. Nothing smaller than that. Okay, so we have our maximum and our minimum. So if we can find half of the that half of that distance then that will be our amplitude so let's take 28 let's make our life a little bit easier let's just call this 15.0 not 150 but 15.0 so 28 minus 15 gives us 13 so that's the distance from the top down to the bottom so the amplitude member is always half of the distance between the top and the bottom so we're going to take 13 and divide it by 2 and that gives us 6.0 five so that is our amplitude so I guess we actually found a first so we have T equals 6.5 and again it starts at the top and it goes down so that should be no problem it's not gonna be negative if it started at the bottom and went up then it would be negative but it's not so cosine and then now we actually know the bottom which we're calling 15.0 and then if we go, if we take our amplitude, we take our, oops, not 13, but 15. If we take our minimum and we add this amplitude here, that should get us to the principal axis. So we take 15 plus 6.5, that gives us 21. So if we were to draw a line that goes right down the middle here of all of this data, it should be at about, oops, 21 point and then look it kind of looks like it's about 21.5 so plus 21.5 right and then the last thing all we need to do is figure out what our period is right so if you'll remember we always take 360 and divide by whatever the actual period on here is so and if you'll look it goes from here to here so January to January that would make sense that it would repeat every 12 months. So we're going to put 12 down here, take 360 divided by 12, and we get 30. So 30 is our B. And that there is the equation of this data. So you should be able to plug in, if you didn't have this data here, you should be able to plug in any month. Like, you know, let's say let's, this is the first, January is the first month. Actually, I guess it'd be officially the zero month. Um, so we plug in any month here for T, and you should be able to figure out what the um, monthly maximum, what the maximum temperature for that month is. Okay, uh, let's take a little video break here. I was at a party, and I walked up to these people, and they were talking about art. 
and I don't know anything about art. So, of course, I said, oh, I love art. <laughs> no, 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 oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> well, what museums have you been to? <laughs> I have to go home now. <laughs> I could not think of a single museum name and I had just released I Love Art like a flock of doves. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm standing there. And then I remembered I had read about a museum in France or something. So I figured I'm lying anyway. I might as well lie to get out of that first lie. There's nothing smarter than that technique. <laughs> I was like, well, I was in Paris. At the Louvre. <laughs> Do you like Monet? I love Monet. In fact, I spent a lot of Monet when I was in Paris. <laughs> well, what's your favorite saison? Winter. All right. Um, okay. Anyway, well, th really, this is uh, this is all there is to this section here. Is just trying to figure out, get data, and then real life data, and try to make it into a um, a function. So you should now be able to say, I can solve real world type problems using the sine and cosine functions, and I can create a function from that data. Okay. If you have any questions, please ask. Thanks.